welcome to another episode of Cooking Under Quarantine. Um, we are making a very festive fall dish. I call this my fall harvest chicken pot pie. It's very versatile. You can substitute ingredients for what I'm using and I'll talk you through it as we're going. So uh, the first thing we're going to do, this is chicken pot pie of course, we're going to roast a chicken. I just have some boneless, skinless chicken thighs here. I like to use thigh over, over breast because they're moister and, and when you cook them they will stay juicier and will dry out in the oven. We're just going to do this really simply with a little bit of olive oil and then some salt. You want to season from above so that you can uh, spread it out and also see where your seasoning goes. And then we're also going to put a little bit of black pepper. Not too much. That's a lot. So we're going to spread this out. Actually, it's happened in the kitchen. What you could do now is you can sort of like use that little pile you have now to season. All right. Give our hands a good wash. So now we're just going to pop our chicken to roast for like maybe just take about 25 30 minutes in a 425 degree oven. Put that go. Now we're on to the veggies. So this is a fall harvest pot pie. So I'm doing a mixture of what I like to sort of very fall flavor. So I've got sweet potatoes or yams. In the US they're used interchangeably. Uh, these are, they might look like carrots that have been scared, goat carrots. They're really parsnips. They are sort of like a cross between carrot and a sweet potato or a potato. They are not as sweet as carrots, but they're really good when they roast. They have this wonderful fall quality to that very earthy carrots, of course. Um, our onion is for later. This is already cut up butternut squash. So you can buy the already cubed ones that come in lots of supermarkets now. You can buy the big one and all you have to do is peel off the outside skin and then you cut it up. You don't want to eat the seeds. Um, some, you know, squashes and pumpkins you can. You do not want to eat the seeds of butternut squash. So we're just going to roast these off while we get everything else ready. And you can always substitute other vegetables. Uh, traditionally, chicken pot pie is made with potatoes and carrots and onion and celery. Um, and that's delicious. And I just want to sort of, you know, jazz this up a little bit. So I'm just going to give everything, just chop up the end of our carrots. You can save these scraps and make, like, stock out of it if you want. You could put it into compost. You can save it for that. I'm just gonna cut these into chunks. They don't need to be perfect. Remember, it's all going in the pie, and this is a rustic fall dish. You just throw everything into your big, into your big bowl. Because um, we're just gonna give these also a quick season. I want these ends that are a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna cut them in half before I get them to chop. Alright. And there we go. Go in the pot. It's also just a slice down the middle. And then you can either hold it together and do it, or you can just do it that way. Have to work because you're popping them all at once. So that was about two carrots. Now we do the parsnips. You can peel these, but I've said in other videos, I am not at the peeling camp. I feel you just need to clean them. Just give them like a scrub um, with cold water. And you can eat the skin, it's fine. And I think it gets a little crispier and it's got lots of vitamins and it's delicious. So I think why peel it if you don't have to? Um, you can do like a maybe Tex-Mex variety of this. You could do it like, you know, you can make like with chili or you can do it with uh, hominy, which is like a, a Mexican version of like puffed corn. Hominy is what they grind down to make uh, grits. Um, it's delicious. You can do, so you can do this with like leftover turkey or um, like around Thanksgiving. I've done that many times. It's delicious. You can do this with ground meat and make it sort of like shepherd's pie style. These don't need to be perfect. They just have to all cook together. You don't want super big pieces like that. Okay, let's do two on the other one. And you don't even need to use chicken um, like we did. You can use pre-cooked chicken. You can use leftover meat from anything. You can use, as I said, leftover turkey. You can buy an already roasted or like one of the, you know, the delicious rotisserie chickens they always have on sale at the supermarket. And just take the meat off of the bird or take whatever leftover meat. Let's say you, you, know, you can use a rotisserie chicken for two meals. Um, Rachel Ray has like a, a whole series of some of her, of one of her shows where she like uses rotisserie chicken I think in almost every episode with her like tacos and like some sort of a lasagna and it's really uh, very inspiring if you want to use things multiple times. So this is just doing some sweet potato. I also love the colors in this dish. It's a really vibrant orange for the carrots. You have the sort of more not diluted, but like a more somber orange, I'd say. Of the sweet potato, you can do this with a couple sweet potatoes in the meat. 
super cool and beautiful to look at. But this dish just sort of like screams the fall to me. And don't worry if you think that this looks like a lot of vegetables. You can A, have leftover vegetables and they're delicious as a side dish to any protein. Or you can uh, turn them into like a hash and saute them with a little bit of butter or oil and put, them under, put some eggs over them and you have a lovely breakfast. Or you can just pack up your your pot pie or even make more than one. This is super easy to make ahead. You can make a whole pot pie and freeze it or put it in the fridge. Um, and you know, you have it just ready to go. If you need to make dinner one night or if you're really tired, you don't want to do anything, you just pop it in the oven. That's enough. So I'm just gonna clear my board a little bit. Bye, thanks for coming. All right, so now we have all of our lovely roasted veggies, our red veggies ready to roast. We are gonna season them. So I'm gonna give this a big spoonful of garlic. I did it to about two tablespoons, or this is about six to seven cloves. This is gonna really season a lot of the dish. You can go less, you can do one tablespoon, it's about uh, three to four large cloves, really diced up. You can use fresh garlic, you could even go with garlic powder. This is, I cheated, I used like a jarred, already crushed garlic. It's super lifesaver. You should smell this, it's like amazing. Whenever like garlic hits vegetables, even if they haven't cooked yet, for me it just smells like a kitchen. And then we're also gonna give this olive oil. I, if you, you just sort of eyeball it, but if you really want a precise measurement, I'd say this is about uh, three to four tablespoons. Turn it off. You want your vegetables all to be shimmering a little bit, but you don't need them drowning in the oil. That oil will help them brown in the oven. And now, again, you want a good amount of salt. I'd say about all these vegetables, one and a half tablespoons. And then you want some pepper, a teaspoon. And then I'm gonna go with something that's also very harvest fall for me. We are going to my giant batch that they use for my catering. This is dried rosemary. And I think fresh rosemary would be something I would stick with for if you were doing like your proteins and your meats or if you're doing like a brisket or uh, lamb, lamb and rosemary go one for together. That's where I use fresh. Dry is perfect for these vegetables, especially because they're gonna cook in the oven and it'll the fresh will use a little bit of this vibrancy as it goes. So that's perfect. Now I'm gonna take a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Parchment paper is so great. It is non-stick, so you can put stuff on there. It will protect your pans. It will come right off for easy cleanup. Trust me, you want to use it. And it can usually go up to high temperatures. I mean, it can go up to 425, and you you can potentially use it up to three times. I usually say after after two times, it's kind of done. But for baking, also, it's amazing. So just get all your veggies onto your tray, and then you want to spread it out. You sort of, you want almost a single layer. It's okay if it's not perfect. You spread it to all four corners. Push it down a little bit to the crevices. Okay. Get all these beautiful colors. Now, to pop this tray in with the chicken in the oven. This needs that. All right, so now we're making our crust while our chicken and our veggies are going in the oven. So, make your life super easy. You want a food processor. Like this. If you don't have one, you can use a big bowl and a pastry cover. Um, you can use two forks, you can use a hand mixer, you can use a stand mixer if you have that. Um, so in the but we're using a food processor. So in the bowl of your food processor, you are going to put two cups of flour. So I'm using just plain all-purpose flour. You can switch it up into something holy flour maybe, that'll give it a wonderful nutty texture. Uh, taste. You use chickpea flour, you can use almond flour, um, but that might be a little bit dry, so you might want to add a little extra of the uh, butter or we're using um, vegan butter sticks. You also want two sticks of this. I know it seems like a lot, but make a big crust. So, you need two. You also want a teaspoon of salt. This side. Salt is just going to make everything sort of stay together a little bit stabilizer. So, we're also adding a tablespoon of sugar. And yes, even though it's the savory recipe, you need that sugar. Uh, really bring out the meaning of the sweet. You get a big for the dough, so it's easy to get it all. And then I am just talking to yourself, but I am going to add everything we love. This is all three seasoning. You have a picture of rosemary, thyme, sage, uh, dried garlic, uh, dried onion, salt, pepper. It's, you know, usually use it when you have Thanksgiving in your seasoning to burn. I think it's delicious and it's sweet. A little bit in the dough, it'll flavor. 
the whole thing. And this is very not too cold, I love it. I put a little bit of turmeric in it. Gives it a little bit of that thick flavor. And also, it's just a wonderful orange color. It matches up nicely with all the wonderful colors we have with our vegetables. So, we're gonna put it on. Like this, so it goes. Top, everything down. Just give it a few pulses. You want to start to break up your butter and margarine and you're shortening and you're using that. But you don't want it to be too much. And now, through the heater, or if you're doing this manually, um, without the present, you want to go like a little bit at a time. You're going to add ice water. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to make the dough come together into a ball. And once it's together in a ball, we're going to take it down. But also, it's going to um, keep it flaky and make sure that the butter and margarine is melt. And it's going to give us a more tender, you know, flakier crust. So just put on low and start to use the Don't be afraid to get some ice in there. Don't be afraid to get some ice in there. You see how it's already coming together a little bit? And if you're afraid it's too dry, it's not coming together, you can add a little more water. I just put a little dark out. It'll start to come together on the side. Now we're going to do it all the That's perfect. We are, so we have our wonderful dough. We are just going to lightly flour the surface here. If you're using a board, use that. I'm just using the countertop. Take out your dough carefully. Take it, you might have to take it off of the blade. That's okay. All right. Wash this in the dishwasher. Take off if you have any other pieces. Okay. If there's some smaller chunks of ice I haven't broken down, that's also okay. It'll melt while you're cooking later and create wonderful pockets of moisture and flakiness in your dough. So, we just want to pat this out a little bit. We're not eating it. It's not challah. It's not bread. We want to just form it into a dough so it all stays together. Look how beautiful, vibrant orange that is. That's from the turmeric that we added. And you can see little flecks of dried herbs and poultry seasoning. That looks wonderful. Now, we're just going to take some plastic wrap. Okay, put our dough in the center of our plastic wrap. Make sure you wrap it up tight. Okay, fold the sides. Don't want any big pockets of air. Now I'm going to put this in the refrigerator for at least half an hour, up to two hours, or even overnight. So I've taken our chicken out of the oven. It's just very roasted. I'm going to chop it up into chunks and throw it in in a bit. And now we're going to get started on um, finishing up our filling. So just taking a pan, putting a little bit of chicken drippings and some olive oil in the bottom to heat it up. This is about medium. And while that's going, I'm going to chop up my onion. So easiest way to chop an onion, you have to start at one end, maybe a sharper knife, <laughs> and if you just peel the rest of the onion, you keep the sort of root end intact, and you peel the rest of it. You don't want that first layer, it's very fibrous, it's really tough to break out, and it's not going to taste good in our dish. So, you just sort of peel everything towards the root end. Alright. Then you can chop off everything all at once. There you go. Throw this out. And now, I'm gonna, this is going to be my easy way. Chop it in half, right through. Then, you want to have the end cut off so you can bite down flat. Just start cutting it, not all the way through, just almost to the bottom like maybe half an inch pieces, and then you'll cut it the other way. Same sort of thing, make sure you try to keep it intact, it falls apart okay. And now you just hold it together, and down. And now you have really equally sliced chopped onions. I'll show you the other side so you can see it again. Okay. I'm gonna go one end, then I'm gonna go one, down there, and down the other way. Now you have equal size pieces of onion. Okay, so now we're going to just take our onion, put it into our pan. That's just how we want. Okay, onion. So we are going to continue sauteing our onions in the medium heat. We want it to turn golden brown. Translucent, they didn't need to be caramelized. 
that's for a different dish. That's for a different kind of dish. But in order to heat up the process a little bit, we're going to add a little bit of salt. We'll just even every layer of our dish. We'll give it a little flip. Um, and then after a minute, we're going to add our garlic in. We don't add our garlic in the beginning because we don't want it to burn. Our garlic ruins our whole dish. But what we are going to do now is take a minute and get our veggies out of the oven. How good do those look? They're just soft enough before it can go through. You don't need them to be super squishy because remember they're going to get cooked again when we put them in the pot pie. So we're going to let them rest cool down a little bit while we continue with the filling. And then they're going to go into the filling when we, before we put it in. So these beautiful, let these go for like another five minutes. So our onions are looking nice and cold and brown. We're gonna add garlic. I'd say about a tablespoon. I'm gonna keep it good. But go with your preference. And give that a stir. Now we're gonna start to build our roux. Uh, our roux is going to thicken up our whole thing. So we put a mixture of flour and a mixture of fat. In this case, we use a little more olive oil. And that'll cook it in that mixture sort of become a paste. And that will thicken up our whole sauce, you know, our coating from our hot pie. So, we use our oil and we're just going to add some flour. I made that a quarter of a cup. So you can measure this without just eyeballing it. You want it to be thick, but you don't need it to be, you know, it's not made a pastry. Or mix it together. It needs to be perfect. You can see sort of like the start to bubble a little bit and the flour will start heating up the oil. And don't worry that the onions are covered in it or the deep waves when we add our liquid for our sauce in it and everything will lose up. But we're going to cook this a little bit just so that you don't have that raw flour taste in your in your hot pie. You can do um, a cornstarch slurry in the color. You can a little bit of cold water and cornstarch. And you mix it and you add that to the sauce after it's already been cooking a little bit. Uh, they do that a lot in Asian dishes. Um, you can use arrowroot if you want to. Um, that's also a natural thing to use. You keep cooking for like another minute or so. Spread it out. And you don't want it to burn because people walk on it. And let this, let this keep cooking. Alright, so this has been cooking. It's getting nice brown, but it's not burnt. You brown it, you have flavor. And it's starting to beat it up because it's a new layer. Now, we're going to do what's called deglazing, where you add the liquid to your pan to get all the dripping from the bottom. I'm just going to cook I think I start with about a cup, two and a half cups. And yeah, we can always add a little more later. And you can already see that it's starting to break up the little bit of onion. So, the roux is sticking it up. You can see it's getting a little bit of a lighter color. And it's sort of bubbling on the side and picking up nicely. Remember, we want this to coat all of our vegetables, our chicken, and we're going to need to let it go. We're going to add the rest of our chicken broth. I'd say it's about four cups of water. You can use vegetable stock, you might use vegetarian. Um, it's whatever you want to do. Now we're just going to sort of let this simmer. So we've rolled our dough out to about a quarter of an inch thick and it's ready to go on as our top crust for our chicken pot pie. So here's our wonderful sauce. It's up, it's simmering. Now we'll just add the chicken that we put in. But this is the time we want all the flavors to melt. We're going to turn the heat off. We're not going to be any more either chicken. Hot sauce before it goes into the pan and the crust, but before it goes in the oven also. 
the answer to solve the bread. This looks, I mean, you can eat it by itself with like a piece of crusty bread. You can put this in a bread bowl, it's so delicious. Turn this into a soup easily. Turn it out with chicken stock or vegetable stock. Add a little soy milk. Sometimes I add soy milk to this to thin out the sauce. Make it a little creamier, but the roux really makes it creamy and you don't need it. Um, but do add it if you feel like you need extra richness or dairy. So I'm going to take Nice pan. Whatever side you have in your If you're doing a bottom crust, put your bottom crust in now. If you're not, I'm just gonna spray this a little bit. It's not really necessary, but better taste than sorry. And I'm going to oh, use a spoon, this is so heavy, to get this into the pan. Got that chicken, parsnips, carrots, sweet potato, um, onions, garlic, we have seasoning, which had dried sage and rosemary and thyme, salt, pepper. This is really delicious. It's so, like, comforting for fall. You don't want to overfill it because the sauce will bubble a little bit. And now, I'm going to take, I'm going to take my crust, which is sticking a little bit, but that's okay. If you feel it's too soft, you can put it back in the oven for a little while. I'm going to take this in pieces because I like this with the plastic. So tuck it in on the side a little bit. As you go, so tuck it in and make it fit your, your, your pan. If you're using a pie pan, you probably just want one sort of whole layer. But I, I sort of like to do this. I want people to know it's homemade and I want it to look artsy. You feel if you get it too and it's not exactly what made it more, or it looks in, but so this looks perfect because it's going to puff up and as it bakes they're going to sort of melt together a little bit like side here and the only thing you need to do is take a knife cut a couple of slices because you need to live, give it some air breathe and we're just going to need to escape and just put three nice slits keep this on the baking sheet and So you take your baking sheet, put it in the oven, it'll rack. You want all the airflow. It could be in there 45 minutes, check on it, it could take up to an hour. Depends on how filled it is. Here's our delicious chicken pot pie. It's come out of the oven. It's been in there for about an hour and it's really crispy crust on top. It's perfectly cooked in the middle. It's gotten a little bit thick and ready for you to eat with a nice salad on the side. Enjoy.